Welcome to Comic Chop News. Today we're going to talk about the new movie Glass by M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, before we start talking about it, I want to talk about my history with this series. After Sixth Sense, uh, everybody was excited for his next movie, which was Unbreakable. Unbreakable, when it came out, I think because of the time it came out, people weren't indoctrinated into the whole comic book superhero thing. So it is weird that, you know, 10 years later, everybody is into the comic book movies and Shyamalan was actually ahead of his time. But at the same time, I'm not sure if the way he did this grounded movie would have been as well received coming out with the bombastic superhero movies that are out now. But um, it is nice though, where you now have this appreciation of everybody for the movie where when it came out, not many people were talking about it. And then like a couple years later, I started re realizing its cultural significance because Kanye West on Through the Wire name checked Unbreakable and Mr. Glass in it after talking about how he broke his jaw. So it, it is nice. And the movie came out, it did its business, and then it just disappeared. Um, we got indoctrinated into this universe and then just nothing for years. And then 2016, Split comes out. Really low-key marketing. We just knew it was James McAvoy and he had personalities. So it comes out and uh, I really, I wasn't too hyped for it. And then all of a sudden Perry Nemiroff from Collider started talking about it and a couple of other people talking about how good it was and then the twist ending. So I was like, all right, I have to see this movie. And it was fascinating. James McAvoy, how he didn't get nominated for anything because the way he was able to seamlessly go from personality to personality and bring something to each personality. And I can't tell if some of it was improv or if it was all written, but I mean, he was damn brilliant. And Hedwig, of course, is the standout. Hedwig, his interactions with Anna, Anya Taylor-Joy as Casey and finding out like he keeps saying et cetera, et cetera. Um, he also really likes doing interpretive dance, which that interpretive dance he did is the best thing I've ever seen since Buffalo Bill and Silence of the Lambs when he is showing her how he likes the EDM artist Snails and starts just going to town dancing. Um, some of the personality, like Dennis, kind of takes a little getting used to. Barry was very interesting. Patricia also. Uh, and then finally we get the Beast and we find out how Casey had been abused by her uncle after her father died and he took her in. And the Beast, his thing is the broken are truly the strong and pure. And he lets her go. Again, fascinating. And then we cut to the after credit scene where they're talking about how this is the worst thing since this guy who killed people on a train and we see Bruce Willis, David Dunn there, and he calls him, says, Mr. Glass, and you find out this whole damn thing has been tied together. So then people started figuring out from the original Unbreakable, there's a scene where a woman and a child are walking by and they trigger David Dunn as he passes by them and you can't figure out exactly what and turns out, I believe Kevin was the child who was with the woman and she was abusing him, which turned out causing his DID personality. So from there, now we're at glass. It opens with Kevin or actually we, it's Barry. I think it's Barry starting out with the cheerleaders and then Patricia offers him PB and J. And from there, it crosses over to David Dunn, where these kids were doing video guess stunts where guys walking down the street and they're calling it Superman Punch, decking the guy, knocking him out. So they're running away. David Dunn breaks into the house, does his vigilante justice. We are introduced back to David Dunn's child, Joseph, and their relationship is miles better than it was in the original movie. And... It's really hard to talk about this movie without spoiling anything, so I'm just going to kind of talk about what I liked, what I didn't like. Um, there were some real bold moves in this movie, some that you could call controversial. Um, at times, I thought we didn't get enough of 
uh, Kevin, AKA the Horde, AKA the Beast. But we did get a lot of Hedwig. Hedwig has some great stuff. Um, he talks about how he's a Drake fan now and he had to stop listening to Nikki because after they broke up, he had to stick with Drake. Um, he does his little etc. cetera, et cetera. Um, Talks about his girlfriend, Anya, T Anya Taylor-Joy, Casey. And there's an interesting little scene there where he's flipping between two of the personalities and he's like, oh, you kissing here too? She your girlfriend? Um, Patricia has a couple good ones. We see a lot of the personalities, but not for very long. Um, as you saw in the trailer, the strobe hypnosis lights can trigger his personalities. Uh, there is a little bit of a throwdown. Sarah Paulson in this movie, at the end of the movie, puts on this Wilhelm scream that is just fantastic. I, I felt that kind of... Bruce Willis didn't mail it in, but he was real low energy. I mean, not that David Dunn was high energy in Unbreakable, but it was just a very understated performance. I was disappointed by the amount of Mr. Glass we got in it. Like, he was in it, but he was pretending to be drugged most of it. And you don't really get a lot of him until third, third part of the movie, the third act, and... He's kind of got that look of James Brown in his booking photo from years ago, but wearing a Prince ensemble. Uh, I like seeing some of the older characters, um, especially Anya Taylor-Joy. You get a little bit more of why she's involved in this movie. Um, it's actually a little bit touching. There, again, there's, some of the movie is very self-indulgent. It's, you know, Shyamalan can't get out of his own way at times. But if you're steeped in the Unbreakable universe, you definitely won't mind it as much where someone who isn't necessarily a fan of it is going to sit there and be like, oh, Jesus Christ, just get on with it. Um, of course, we have the asshole psychiatric guards because, you know, we can't have that in a movie. You know, them actually be caring people. Um, what else do we have? Uh, we bring back Elijah's mother. Uh, David Dunn's son is in it quite a bit. Joseph is an interesting character, uh, heartbreaking at times. We get into a little bit more of what's happened since the last movie. And one of the things that I really, really hated so much was just the underuse of certain characters. There could have been more. I The, the Mr. Glass is what irritates me the most because Samuel L. Jackson, I just want more of him when I can. And I, I like the movie. I, I would probably give it about a 3.5 or a 4. It's a lot to unpack and I just got out of the movie right now and trying to dance around what happens in the movie. There are two twists. Uh, one of them, you'll see visual cues prior to it happening. And one is genius, one is a little bit eh. But the genius one, it's rather heartbreaking. And you, when you see it, you'll understand. Uh, there's no after credit scene of the movie. It's shot well. The score I, I liked, it's just, it, it's a movie I might have to see again. And if it sounds like I didn't like it, I did like it. It's just there, there was some fat that could have been trimmed off of it. Um, but definitely go see it if you were in the universe. If you're not steeped in it, then I would recommend just waiting for it to come out on In Demand or Blu-ray and then rent it or buy it then because... There, there is something I, I really want to see the behind the scenes and the commentary on it. Uh, James McAvoy, I can't say enough about his performance in this. He just seamlessly can dance from these characters one after the other. Even the Spanish guy where he's speaking Spanish. Um, Jade, who is trying to seduce a guard. So yeah, um, that is my non-spoiler review for Glass. Check it out. Uh, don't let anything I say stop you from seeing it or my interpretation of what I saw paint it in a way that 
maybe discourages you from seeing it because you might see something I don't see when you see it. But I think I'm fairly positive on the movie. Just know that you're going to have like a groan scene there, here or there, and that's kind of typical of an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Anyway, thank you for viewing. Comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Good night.